Hey everybody, Jochen Haydn here. I'm back with the 4 January 1942 turn. Um, I'm really hoping for some more continued success. Uh, I, we do have some issues in China near Xi'an, um, but overall I'm really liking where things are at, and I think we have a good chance to do more damage this turn. So uh, stick around and let's see what all transpires here. Okay, let's do it. Let's see what he's got for us. Uh, he's continuing to work his magic going down the uh down the peninsula there in Philippines just by by the virtue of just being nearby. Oh, oh dang it. Looks like we got uh, Mark 14 here. So that was a, a cruiser minesweeper or a cruiser a cruiser mine layer and so, oh look at this. So we had some ACMs and some CMs. I, I, I bet you I know where they're going. These guys are probably heading down to Rabal to set up some minefields. So, you know, it would have been nice to knock out one of these bad boys, but it didn't quite work out. Let's continue. So no night activity. Oh, okay, so... He's got the I-10 at Nomea, but, you know, I'm, oh, I definitely don't want to be losing destroyers like that, but he wasted two torpedoes on the ISIS. Uh, hopefully we have some ASW contacts with him later, because I want to get him out of here. Oh, no. Oh, dang it. Ah, Dang it, man. That's not good. I have all kinds of ASW assets going on here too. I don't know why they didn't see that guy coming. Let's listen to make sure we don't hear any sinking sounds. Which we don't. We may be able to save the ship still. I I, I hope. Man, I'm going to have to flood that area with ASW because I cannot be having him hit me as I'm unloading. No good. No good. Hmm. All right. So we missed this patrol boat here, but we do determine that he's got some stuff there. And because we're in deep water, we're able to escape without any issues. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so if I'm a okay, well, there's a lot going on here. I'm sorry, I'm trying to talk and and look at all these messages right now. So <sighs> this is not going to go well. I put some I-15s up over Chang Shaw because I felt like he was going to be coming at me with a lot of bombers because that's all I've really got to put into play. And uh, I'm pretty sure this is going to go pretty bad. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't see my I-15s actually having a successful uh, cap action here. Hmm. Well, these I-15s are holding their own as best they can, right? The pilots in these I-15s aren't bad per se. It's just the aircraft that they're in aren't very good. You know, and he seems to have the jump on us here pretty, pretty convincingly. Hey, it's nice to see that we're actually damaging these things. I don't know if they're going to, they could lead to some ops losses. So, you know, that's, that's cool. Let's keep going, I-15s. Let's see what you guys got. Well, we seem to be getting the better of him right now. And, and as soon as I say that, I don't mind get blown up. Yeah, okay. I, t I talked too soon. But we keep dumping planes in and we're, we're going to have more than he's got. Hmm. This must be the B-Team Zero pilots, right? I'd like to see some more Zero. There, that's what I was looking for. Oh, 
come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Well, I don't know. It could have been worse, I guess. I think we lost at least three, but we definitely did. Okay, you guys seeing this? Uh, Lodric is just coming in at 31,000 feet now because that's that's like one of the top altitudes. So I see what he's doing here. So we're just going to have to keep going up and up and up because he's going to keep sweeping us at these really high altitudes. I think it's kind of... I think it's kind of gamey and lame, but whatever, dude. If that's what you want to do, we'll, we'll go up there into the stratosphere with you. All right. There's a big test here. I have much better pilots in these P-40s this time around, so I'm really hoping they can do better this time. He doesn't... I, I'm, I'm convinced that he's gone up to 31,000 feet like all the other sweeps he's done, and I did not have my aircraft that low. So we're just going to have to keep going up into the stratosphere... Uh, all right, I just want to skip ahead here. Oh my goodness, this is this is not sustainable at all. And there he is again. He's coming in with this stupid thirty-one thousand feet, and our aircraft are at twenty-two because that's something reasonable. So now we're gonna have to pull more aircraft up even higher because he's keep he's gonna just keep doing this, which is really really. I dumb, I think, but whatever. It is. It is. It's the way the game is, right? So we lose eight P-40s here with good pilots in them. I don't even know what else to do here at this point. I'm going high. I got the best pilots I can put in there, and they're still getting shot up. So, not ideal. It's so depressing right now. This phase of the war, with um, us having so many setbacks in the air. I'm doing everything I can, but I just don't have the planes and the pilots that he's got. And it's just it's just kind of depressing to see so many of my aircraft shot down every turn for no gain. It just seems kind of silly. But, I mean, somebody tell me that this is normal. So we lose another, at least one more I-15, possibly more. We don't do anything to him. Because he's coming in at... Let's see if we can figure out... I, I, geez, but look at this, thirty-four thousand feet. Yeah, I don't even want to watch this. I'm sure all three of these are gonna get shot down. No, no maybe not this time. But it, he, as long as he keeps coming in at thirty-one thousand feet, we're just gonna have to keep raising our cap altitude as well. All right, now it's time for some payback. Check this out. I wasn't messing around today. I knew. I knew he was going to come at us at Surabaya. I just knew it. So I put all kinds of aircraft on cap here. Like all of them. So we allegedly don't lose anything. He only comes at us with two. This is a little bizarre. We have a lot of aircraft ready to go here, so I hope he sends a raid now. Bring me a raid. Okay, bombing. He's trying to slow us down getting into Can Cien here. Casualties are light. Oh, man, look at the size of these raids. He's desperate. He's scared. Look at that. All these aircraft are not doing to diddly to me. He's so desperate to save this unit. He's throwing everything in a kitchen sink at us to slow us down. Okay, so now he's coming in with some more bombers, and he's got more escort. There's no way that my 15 survived this. Yeah, dang it. Yeah, he's really plastering us now. I think the secret's out about our aircraft at Changsha. He's going to start hitting us hard, so we're going to have to pull out of that base, you know? In the grand scheme of things, this damage is minimal. I'm just worried about losing the aircraft on the ground. Again, he's hitting that unit trying to get in. And now it's just me attacking him. He's got air. He's got uh, units on this road here coming across the bridge, and I'm trying to hit him back now. So this is a, a fragment of a division, so we can expect about 150 assault value on this. He's trying to do something at Pinxiang, but he's not gonna. It's not gonna work. He's going to have to bring in a lot more stuff than this. But 
I'm doing what I can to slow him down too. All right, we don't really accomplish a lot on that. The the weather and the hex is what's hurting us here. I got a little bombing raid going on myself here. I have all these aircraft sitting around. We might as well do something. So it looks like we have a uh, SNLF unit coming in, and he's definitely coming towards Sinkawang. Sinkawang? Sinka something. Ooh. So I got some B-17s coming in to Samal. It looks like he uh, definitely figured this. Ooh. Oh, all right. Let's go B-17s. This is a pretty sizable cap. Let's see if we get through. Yeah, we get through all right. Let's see if we hit something. We have clear. Looks like we've got some clear um, weather here. There we go. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Uh-oh. Okay, we're getting some hits. Get some hits. I hear something sinking. I don't know if you guys are hearing it in your speakers, but I just heard it in mine. Um... This was not the best raid for us here. We have seven damaged B-17s and one destroyed by flak. We take out a zero and we, we we blow up an ACM and hit two other ships that may have already been damaged before. Hopefully they'll sink. Um, the, here's the issue is I, could, I did take this raid at pretty much max range, so we may lose some of these getting back. Oh, a little bit of stragglers coming in. We get through. All right, we hit some fuel tanks here. Not really what I want. I want, I want to take out the ships, not the fuel tanks. But, you know, I'll take it. It's something. And you'll notice here the bomb load is half of what it normally would be. And this little dot here tells you that we're coming in at extended range. So that's why the bomb load is lower than normal. What? 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 Wait, what? No way. There is absolutely no way he got a carrier unit in here. How did he get these in here? Oh, no. Oh, no. Not again. This is crap, dude. This is absolute garbage. I had... Oh. Dude, guys, we're in trouble. We are in big trouble here. Um, he somehow snuck this whole unit all the way through here. I have naval search everywhere through here. I have overlapping naval search, and he got this carrier unit all the way over here to Townsville. We are screwed. I'm going to tell you right now. We have tons of units in ships going to and from Port Moresby. I have no idea how he got in here. Oh, we are screwed. We're screwed. Guys, this is so bad. This is really bad. I don't understand how he got in. Guys, this is super bad for us. Okay, well, I have a lot. Look at this. Look at this. We are so done. I don't even want to watch it. So look at look at what you're seeing here, guys. Um... I don't understand how he got his carriers into this in that deep. I didn't spot these at all coming in. And I have naval search all over the place. We are in... So I have a lot of ships committed to going into Port Moresby right now. So this is super bad for us. Alright, now he's bombing us at Sinkawang. Golly... This is depressing. I, I I don't know what else to do here, you know, because I have the naval search that I thought I needed to to protect me from something like this coming in, and we totally did not. Oh, well, there's something. Let's see if we can get some revenge here. Yep, there we go. There we go. Okay, there's some payback here. Yes! Finally. So our PBYs get something done here. 
So it looks like we take out the Kashi on the W6, but this does not make up for a complete and utter disaster in Australia right now. Might sweep over Baton. There's nothing there. All right, the usual raid to uh, look at the size of these raids. How do we even combat something this size? Look at these aircraft. So Sinkawang basically ceases to exist as a forward base for us now. That is it's terminated. Oh, shit. So I was not targeting Miri. I'm targeting the ships at Miri. And it looks like we don't even get through. Well, let's, <laughs> let's get a little more action in here, right? Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So this is cool. Again, I, I, on the balance sheet, this is not good compared to what the absolute disaster that is befalling us in Australia right now. But, um, you know, it's something. Oh, more. Oh, yes. Oh, please. Please put some torpedoes into this. Ah! This is the second turn now that this Mizuho has dodged our torpedoes. Would it, wouldn't have been wouldn't that have been awesome to sink this? All right. So he's got. He looks like he's found our. Uh, he's found where we're. Um, Kind of bringing ships in here. Unfortunately, I do have escort aboard. I don't even know how to explain how he got those carriers into that position that close to Australia without me spotting them. With all of the naval search assets that I have in play, I don't really understand it. All right, the usual bombardment attack here. All right, so it is what it is. There wasn't much happening on the ground this turn. <sighs> this was... I can't even begin to explain to you how disastrous what's going on right now is is for us. Um, we have a lot of ships at sea going towards Port Moresby because we had no indication that he was anywhere near us. If I had seen carriers coming, I wouldn't have sent those ships out there. But they're all out there and they have troops aboard. And it's just really, really bad for us right now. So um, I don't even really have a good answer as to what we need to do to get out of this. Oh, I'm going to love what, looking at the intel report on this one. So this is bad. This is really bad for us, guys. This could be... This is a, this will end up being a bigger disaster than what happened at um, near Burma for sure. Okay, guys, this is the situation now. Um, once again, we are in dire straits off the coast of Eastern Australia. Once again, near Carnes and Townsville. Lodrick somehow magically teleported an entire carrier task force through all of our naval search into this area. And we never saw him coming. Incredibly suspicious. Incredibly disconcerting to say the least. But before we get into that, let's look at the losses because it's bad. 
Okay, let's start with aircraft losses, which were absolutely horrendous today. All right. For today, we lost 14 P-40s. These aircraft are absolutely, positively useless. I have, I am absolutely disgusted at the performance of these aircraft. Uh, we lost 14 today. Basically, all of those were at Port Moresby. Once again, he comes in with this bogus um, sweep at 31,000 feet, which is just insane, and he just slaughters us. We have great pilots in that thing, and it doesn't even matter. So these P-40 squadron is basically completely decimated. It's finished. I have nothing left in it. So uh, we now have no no good aircraft at Port Moresby. Uh, my I-15s that I put up at um, Changshaw were absolutely blasted. We had five 139s that were destroyed on the ground by Dojo, oh, not Dojo, <laughs> by Lodric at Sinkawang. We managed to shoot down four zeros, which I, I think w I was just luck. It wasn't because our aircraft were actually hitting anything. It was just because, I don't know, maybe the zeros flew in front of each other and they shot each other. I don't know. We lost four Dornier 24s at an ill-fated bombing attack at Miri. He had fighter cover there. Two B-17Es were, were lost this turn. One to Ops, one to Flak. And then he loses a couple of his aircraft. We lose a PBY-4 and a Catalina-1. And that's basically it for losses. 34 to 6. Absolutely horrible ratio. This is not what I want to see. Almost 6 to 1. Uh, and it's very concerning because we're almost 2 to 1 losses for him against him. Because his zeros are made out of titanium and have robotic pilots. And my planes just suck. Whatever. Uh, Army losses. Uh, we took losses today because we had men on the ships that were sunk. Now, nothing else really happened on the ground besides that. But we just lose the army loss points strictly because of that issue. Uh, he doesn't take any more army loss points. <sighs> now we get into the really, really crappy stuff. The allied ship sunk. Okay. Let's take a look at what happened last turn. Let's just look at ours first. We lose two AM escort ships. Um, a, a unloaded a cargo ship, which was a good one because it was fast. Okay, I take it back. The Beltana and the Johanna uh, Eustacen were unloaded, and they were returning from Port Moresby to reload. Okay, I also believe the the Lycaon Lyc was unloaded as well. However, the Mac Mac Macdui and the Montoro were loaded, and they had troops aboard. Destined for uh, they were destined for uh, Port Moresby, so. Um, now looking at this, it, my losses weren't as bad as I thought, but they're still bad because there was troops loaded on board, and I can't stand losing cargo ships with troops aboard, all right? But there is some bright side to this. Let's look at this. We bagged a few ships this turn. So we're reporting that we took out the ACM, Bonshu Maru, two DMSs, and the Kashi, which was kind of a nice hit. Um, I believe this because we saw the Kashi take two direct uh, Mark, thir Mark 13 torpedo hits. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's all it takes to finish off a ship like this. So uh, this is a Katori class cruiser, which in the grand scheme of things aren't that great because they're really slow. But they're worth a lot of points. And he only has a couple of these. Two or three, I think. So it it's a kill. I'll take it. It's points. And these are... Uh, light cruisers that he'll never get back. He only gets maybe five or six more light cruisers for the rest of the war from now to the end. So every ship we kill now is hurting him more than our ship kills are. Um, looking at this, going by all dates, this is the tally for the Japanese now. We won't look at mine because it's absolutely horrendous. Um, yeah, but look, we're getting a nice little collection of, a of AMCs and ACMs. Uh, we we have bagged at least three uh, destroyer minesweepers. I think it's actually more than that. I think he's lost more than what's being stated here. Uh, we do we do now have two light cruisers to the tally. So we did inflict some casualties on him last turn, but it wasn't nearly enough to make up for what we lost. All right, so those are the losses. Let's take a look briefly at the SIGINT because I didn't do that last time we did a video. You guys can read along with me. I'm just going to scroll down and, and look at it. Hopefully you can see it on your screen as well. Heavy volume of radio transmissions are detected at Babel. So he's got something going on there again. 
14th Army. So we know the 14th Army, Army is on Luzon. Because that's what's going to hit us at Clark Field. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Some all right, most of the stuff that you see, with the exception of of the 139th Squadron, is stuff that's just transferring around. So we do have a couple new units coming on the map. So this RAF Squadron at Aiden, we can definitely use. So we'll have to transport that. And the First Marine Raider Battalion at Eastern United States will transport to LA and get it into the fight. Let's go back and look at the pilot stats. I'm actually afraid to look here. List top pilots. Yikes. Okay, so. Six KIA, six wounded, and one missing. Um, I guess when you consider we lost 34 aircraft, it's not the worst. But I am concerned about uh, if any of the pilots that were killed were really good. So looking at this, I don't see anything particularly great except for this B-17E pilot. This is the one that actually shot down a plane. Um, okay, it, it, well, okay, it's a different one. But he was lost probably over the attack on Sama. But it's still like the bulk of our good aces are, are intact here. So that's that's okay. All right, let's take a look at the tactical situation. So step one is we're looking at it right now. Um, we have this. We have his Kido Butai fragment here. Uh, we don't know what the escort is in here. I would imagine it has uh, several heavy cruisers and some destroyers. But we do know that a lot of his heavy units are not in play. They're up north. So if you take a look south of here, you see this? We had this heavy cruiser task force heading into battle completely unrelated to... I sent these from Sydney uh, a week, ago, a couple days ago, just to have them forward deployed to Port Moresby in case he was going to try to do something. So these are actually in position to intercept and do something about these carriers here. So I need to make a big decision here. Do we go for it? Or do we retreat? Because we can get away and clear the area. We can totally get out of here unscathed. Or do we roll the dice and make an attack on this? So here's the options. Option A, we retreat. We save the ships, guaranteed. Option B, we fight. If we fight, we have no guarantee that we're going to win or that the engagement will be good. But we should try it. Or we could try it. And one of two things will happen. We, we come out on top and we do an outstanding job. Or we miss the intercept entirely. And now we're out in the open where his carrier aircraft can pick us off during the daytime. So I want to hear what your thoughts are. Put in the comments what you think I'm going to do. Am I going to go for it or am I going to run? All right. You know how I am. But I've also been trying to change the way I play a little bit so that I'm not so outrageously aggressive that I'm just losing stuff just to lose it. So tell me what you think I should do in the comments and we'll find out what happens when I send this turn. So what else I'm trying to do in the meantime is save whatever's left, okay? So right now we do have this uh, task force here. It's This ship is heavily damaged and will probably sink, but we have troops aboard. So um, I'm going to attempt to unload the troops as best I can in port and hope for the best. But if these stay in port, they will probably be destroyed. But I, I can't disband them because there's troops aboard, like I said. So we're probably going to lose these two guaranteed. I have no choice but to unload. 
Um, again, much is to be determined about what I do with this unit. It just happened to be in the area. All right. Um, we have this unit, which I'm going to hightail it out of here as fast as I possibly can. We have these units that are going to make a run for it at um, for Port Moresby because going south is a bad idea. We have, All we can do is go north. And then we have some other units on here that we're going to wave off. We're going to we're going to discontinue their movement and just get them out of the area. We can totally do that. So these units should be safe. And then I have a unit that was heading over here. We're definitely recalling that and we're getting out of here. It was just some destroyers I was going to forward locate to Townsville for escort duty. But I don't want them in the area right now. So I'm going to redirect them south and get them out of the way. So we only have these ships, these ships, and these ships that are at risk of dying. These ones will be safe, and these ones, it's entirely up to me what's going to happen with them. Do we go forward or do we not? I have an opinion, but I'm going to keep it to myself. So that's what's going on in Australia. Uh, nothing else is cited in um, anywhere else in, in the Solomon. So a big question I have here is how in the world did he get this task force all the way to here without me ever seeing it? Okay. I have naval search here. Look at the look at the uh, look at the bands. I have naval search here. We have overlapping bands of naval search. How did he get from here or from wherever he came from to here in one turn without me seeing it? The max speed that this guy can go is probably nine. It's probably eighteen hexes per day at full speed. Okay, so you're telling me that Lodric ran full speed from Rabal. To here let's see how far that is 18 hexes it's theoretically possible but i never saw it forming up i never saw it. the subs didn't detect it so the only feasible explanation that i have as to how this could have occurred was that this unit was in rabal i didn't see it form up and it fired off from rabal to here 18 hexes in a single day at full speed so he burned a heck of a lot of fuel getting here but i never saw it coming that that is the only explanation because the naval search is in place and I have vision past Rabal, past Tulagi. Okay. I would have seen it coming from this direction or from this direction if he was moving at mission speed. So that's my theory. He came from Rabal, got past my um sub barriers, and shot straight to here in one turn. That was either incredibly clairvoyant suspicious as heck or brilliant what do you think it is I don't want to say either way I'm not making any accusations that there's any wrongdoing or cheating going on but it's just very hard for me to understand or or believe that anything short of him coming from Rabal to here at max speed could get him to this location right now if you have a better theory I'm all ears but nothing else makes sense okay let's just uh uh, I'm done talking about this. It's making me sick to my stomach. Let's just go up to <laughs> China and look what's going on here. All right. So once again, he's on the move, and he's now only one hex away from Ankang. And we have these guys that are heading as fast as they can to Ankang. But the problem is, is that we have two hexes to go on crappy roads, and he has literally one hex to go. We have one, two. So he will get there before we do. And then what happens? I don't know. I don't know if we're going to be able to hold or not. So I really hope we can. I have this unit here trying to do a little bit of a, um, interception here. Just trying to block the road. But I don't even... They're moving so slow. I don't think they're going to be able to get here before this unit even gets here. So we're in we're in dire straits here at Ankang. We really need to hope for the best. Because I don't know if that's enough to hold. I really hope we can hold out. Because we do have really good terrain. This is um, rough terrain, and as you recall from rough terrain, it's times three. So in, in essence, it multiplies the effectiveness of my troops by three, and you can add on fortification level, right? So some of these units have some forts. Some have even, a couple have even two, right? So we really got to hold here until the Lo Yang army can get in place. And once they get in place... Um, Actually, that reminds me. I need to go ahead and gather all these guys up and set them to go here. 
and so all to march not to follow but to march because i want units to get there as fast as they can don't wait for the slowest unit if you're faster than the unit next to you get it there so we have a lot of ground to cover and not a lot of time to do it if we can get this unit here i am confident we can hold out for a while because we have additional reinforcements coming from the north to the south we'll have over four thousand salt value here at this hex in a week but will they hold out long enough for me to get those units in place i don't know <sighs> it's 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 sketchy all right elsewhere um not much to discuss except for we have supply issues all over the place except here right so we have a serious supply issue at concien now but so does he so it, it it's kind of a race against time to see who can do what here because we have to open up a supply road we're blocked here and we're blocked here because he's in this hex. So we can't get supplies of this unit right now. So I don't really know what to do. Unless we just wait till we get all of our units in play here. And we just freaking go for him and just overwhelm him with force. Even though we're out of supply, he's also out of supply. So with overwhelming numbers, we may be able to carry the day. And once we do that, we destroy that unit. We can fall back to our supply lines and uh, make, a, make a better run of it. Other than that, that's really the situation in China right now. There's nothing else really going on with that. We do have, like I said, we were able to really rescue a lot of these units out of this area and we get them back to here. I'm really happy that that tr occurred. We also have this unit that's retreating right now. Um, and we're going to get them into this hex and then hopefully cross the river here and back into Changsha. And if we can do that, I'll be so thrilled because that's another 9,000 troops and some guns that could have been lost but aren't. So... I feel like I've played that pretty good so far. we got to wait and see what we encounter here and here. If we get across the river and get to here, I feel safe that we can make it all the way. All right, looking at Burma, um, I feel confident in telling you that right now his cruisers are in port at Georgetown. Okay? He's got some sub-chasers in port at ASW, but I'm not going in there anyway. But look at all these cruisers he's got stacked up there. They're in, they're rearming, and they're refueling. They're doing whatever they got to do, repairing. But that's where they're at right now. We have a couple days before he can get back into... Well, we have up to a day before he can get back to Rangoon. But I, I think we got at least a turn before... Well, actually, no. I'm really confident that we have at least a day. Because this these units are in port. They are not formed up. It's my turn. He can't, he can't put them in a task force this next turn. So I have a little bit of time. And I'm going to do what I can to see what I can get into Rangoon. I had a, initially had it routed for this. I think we're just going to go and risk the submarine intervention and go straight to try to get in Rangoon and get some supply in there while we can. We have a, a wound of opportunity. So let's see. We have nine hexes to go, and we can move a total of six per day. So in a day and a half, we'll be in Rangoon, and we'll have the safety of the harbor and the mines and all that stuff to protect us from him. So I'm going to go for it. That's the plan. Uh, other other than that, um, there's not really else, much else going on in India right now. I'm, I'm okay with what's going on in India and the Bay of Bengal and Burma for the time being. Taking a look at Singapore, Judgment Day is coming. We have a, maybe a turn or two before he's in town. This is a massive death stack, and we he will win on the first attempt. I guarantee it. Mark my words. He will win when he engages Singapore because he has to do a, a shock attack to cross this 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 um, you know the little bay here, and coming across with a shock attack with that many troops, we have no chance because we have nothing in there. So. It's going to happen, and we're going to pay for it. What can we do? So, we'll just have to make the most of it. So, wish us luck. Uh, I expect within the next turn or two, Singapore will be in his hands, and we will be in up Shiza Creek without a paddle because he'll have access to everything that Singapore allows you to have. Um, the repair docks, the uh, industry, everything will be... And give him a nice quick run up to Burma to do his bidding. At Clark Field, he did not attack, but <laughs> look what he's got. This is a death stack of epic proportions for him. 
That's a lot of troops. He's got at least six divisions, tank units, jeez, uh, everything. He's got everything here. So I don't know how long we're going to be able to hold out at, at Clark. Maybe another turn or two, but not much longer. That's Sturgeon that we saw that was in in uh, dire straits here. So we're going to try to get over here to do some repairs and keep shuttling it down until we can get enough repair work done to it that we can sail it long long distances. But this flotation damage is inching up every turn. Over here is where we sunk the Kashi and those two DMSs last turn. That's the re that's the remainder of that task force. Um, I'm hoping that we can maybe get one more attack's worth out of them, but I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But our PBYs at our PBYs at Kagayan have done amazing work for us, and I'm really happy with everything that's gone on with that. So they have a lot to be proud of. Sinking about five ships as he transited through here over the last few days. Okay, wow, there's so much to talk about. There's so much going on here. Uh, here we are in Java, and his carriers are here, moving northwest this way. I have no idea where they're going or why they're coming through this way. Uh, maybe he's moving towards Singapore with the intent to dock there as soon as he takes it. He's probably expecting to take Singapore within a turn, so he's going to move his carriers. This is just my theory. And it looks like, look at that. I think he can, oh, I know what happened. Remember that uh, battleship formation that was here? Well, guess where it's at now? It's here. He combined them into one huge task force. So he's got those battleships and his carriers and all the supporting ships all in one task force. And he's moving them towards Singapore to rearm because he's going to take Singapore in a day or two. And he's just going to park it in air. And then he'll have this force ready to come up here into freaking Burma. We are in trouble, guys. <laughs> He's going to just take this unit and bring it up here. And he's going to run amok all through here. Oh, my goodness. This is <laughs> this is bad. He's going to have all these guys and all these guys here at Georgetown. And he's just going to rule the waves all throughout here. And we're going to have nothing that can challenge him. So this unit might be the very last convoy I can get in a Rangoon for a long time. Because all of this stuff is stacking against us here. <sighs> Yeah, I just realized that. This is bad. Guys, we're in trouble. Pray. Pray for us because uh, within five turns, he could have carriers, battleships, you name it, in the Bay of Bengal, shutting down India, shutting down everything that we've got. And I don't have a good uh, answer as to when that will resolve itself. So, yeah, we have <laughs> we have problems here. Uh, I think I've covered the basics here. If you have any additional questions, do you have any comments about what we saw? If you think my theories are incorrect, if you have a different idea of what he's going to do with this, or what he's going to do with this, or what I'm going to do with this, by all means, let me let me hear your suggestions. So that's our situation. I would say um, the last few turns prior to this, I was feeling upbeat and positive, and like we had a chance to get some things done. And now, seeing what I'm seeing on the map, I'm feeling very pessimistic. I'm feeling a bit of like despair because I don't have an answer for any of this stuff. I can't deal with this very well. I certainly can't deal with this very well. This is going to be a problem. And we have nothing in the area that can do anything about it. Right? The only success we've really had has been around Fortress Cagayan and Mindanao because I've, I've purposely positioned aircraft to be strong here. And they've been very strong and I'm very happy with that. But the reality is that these losses that he's taken here, while they hurt him, are not going to slow him down. He doesn't need these light cruisers. He didn't need those destroyer minesweepers. He didn't need any of that stuff to do what he's doing right now. What we need to be hurting is this stuff and this stuff. And we don't have anything that can do that effectively. So I'm feeling a little bit of despair and some, and some apprehension about the next few turns of what's going to happen. Because um, we know Clark's about to fall. We know Singapore's about to fall. We know that Sion is at great risk of falling soon if we don't get help there. So I just don't really know uh, what I can be positive about right now. So if you want to make me feel better, please do it because I'm not seeing a lot to be happy about or a lot to feel good about in the state of this campaign. We went from good to bad in one turn. 
as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting Lodric and myself. We're, we're, despite all this, I'm still having a blast playing this game. This is my first play by email, but I'm loving it. Even though I'm getting my butt kicked, I'm still having fun. I'm having fun on my Discord talking to everybody that's telling me how much I suck or telling me that I'm doing good. I'm having fun making these videos and posting them on YouTube. So keep supporting me. It, it keeps me motivated to keep doing this. And your support is coming and leaving a comment and sharing your thoughts about what I'm doing. So that's all I got to say right now. I'll let you guys go, and we'll catch you in the next one.